Good afternoon, everybody. What an amazing day we have had so far with amazing speakers, some fantastic presentations, and you're about to see another one. Who is ready to unleash the power of predictive analytics with Veritas Insight Solutions? We have two awesome speakers, Anand Kayande and David Scott, who are gonna walk you through the power of those predictive analytics using our Veritas Insight Solutions. So, just a quick housekeeping note I wanted to make clear. We are going to take questions at the end of the presentation. So in the lower left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the Slido app, which tells you where to put those questions in. So feel free to ask those questions throughout the presentation and we'll come back here and get those questions answered for you. So keep them coming. All right, sit back, relax, and it's time to watch our amazing speakers. David, Anand, over to you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this presentation on prediction analytics in digital compliance. We are super excited about this presentation, not only because this is a brilliant upcoming approach, but also because this prediction analytics is naturally very close and very obvious fit for all the digital compliance product which deals with huge text data. In this presentation, Dave Scott and I will be talking First, about the prediction analytics in general, and then how small effort in making prediction can act like a tipping point and magically change the business scenario for digital compliance customers. Prediction is power. Although in general, predictions are not new. Since the beginning of human civilization, we all are predicting possible event that can happen in future using some or other approaches. Recent revolution in data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence together is doing miracles in technology-based predictions. These predictions can be game changer for almost all of Veritas customer as it can empower them to take right business decisions. Almost all product in digital compliance deals with huge text data of customer in various format like emails, loose file, images, audios, videos, and so on. By adding ability in the system to infer from this data, we can help our customer to predict possible future event and prepare them to conquer future business challenges and opportunities. With this background, let me jump to the slides. Today, we live in digital jungle. We are surrounded by exponentially growing data. Every day we produce enormous data by sending emails, using social media, using online chats, taking and uploading pictures and videos. We all use computers, internet, intranet, mobile phones, and other similar devices extensively. All these things leads to exponential growth of digital data. Not only we human, but nowadays machines too are generating and keeping more and more data by sending automatic notifications, creating log files of every event, of every transaction that we do online and so on. As per Force Magazine estimate, every day we produce some 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. Now all these data are of no use unless we make something meaningful out of it. This data is like gold ore. Let me echo this, data is not gold, but it is raw gold from where pure gold can be extracted. In this presentation, we will focus on extracting that gold. Predictive analytics is not merely a corporate buzzword, but it is philosophy by which Veritas digital compliance products are inspired and driven also. It is technique to look into past, understand it thoroughly, and then based on that, predict future events. Prediction is art and science as well. It is science because it is not merely a guesswork. It involves applying scientific techniques like probability, statistics, linear algebra, calculus, and computer algorithms. And at the same time, prediction is art as well because it is not straightforward like weather forecasting, but it involves creating samples, finding similarity and patterns in the available data training machines, and so on. Entire prediction analytics 
is based on three facts. First, human behavior can be predicted correctly up to large extent. Researcher says that human behavior is greatly influenced by the surrounding environment in which he or she is immersed. By understanding the surrounding environment rightly, we can predict the possible future event. Secondly, nowadays data is everywhere and it is growing exponentially. We all breathe in and breathe out data. We start our day with checking mobile phones. All day, we use various gadgets. We use enormous data and produce enormous data. All this data can be very useful to understand our surrounding. Thirdly, we can develop ability in the system to read between the lines. If we pay close attention to the data, we will realize that data is not just collection of facts, but it is reflection of what is going on in our lives, in our societies, and in general, in our world. If we develop a mechanism to understand data, find relation and pattern inside it, we can certainly predict what can happen next. Now, important question is why we need prediction at first place. Simple answer to this question is that prediction reduces business waste by conquering the uncertainty. In any business, any effort, any decisions, or any time spent on doing anything that does not add value into business directly or indirectly is the business waste. Merely just for an example, any futile effort in product promotion is business waste. If we closely look at all this wasted effort in any business, one thing comes forward is that root cause of all the wasted effort lies in the uncertainty. And good news is that we can reduce uncertainty by predictions. So today we can say that gone are the days when you wanted to find a customer for your product. Now in this prediction era, it is possible to discover which product your customer will want in future. Instead of maximizing sales only, today companies are working on optimizing customer lifetime value by making prediction in business decision at every stage. There is a popular saying in data science, everything can be predicted. Who will click, who will buy, who will lie, and even who will die. And there is no exaggeration in this statement. This is completely true. Insurance companies worldwide are doing this for so many years historically. In fact, many years back when technology was not so advanced, at that time also insurance companies were able to predict how many people out of every thousand will die in a particular year with enough accuracy. Their entire business model is based on their predictions. And they are doing this successfully for so many years. If you ask me what is top common secret of today's outlier businesses, only answer is all of them predict. Today, using predictive analytics, we can predict which customer will buy which product. And we can find customer who will buy more if they are more influenced or they are promoted more. Job site can predict most possible match based on skills and requirements. An entertainment business can predict which movie you will like to watch next, or a music app can predict which song you will like to listen on Monday morning. Before elections, media predict who will win the election based on opinion polls and surveys. And finally, no joke intended, but nowadays we can even predict if a couple will get divorced in some years or not. With this background, let me take a pause. Let me invite David Scott to present us prediction analytics, how it is aligned with vision and mission of digital compliance product and what is there on the roadmap. Over to you, Dev. Thanks. Excellent. <clears throat> Thanks, Anand. That was a great overview and uh, definitely predictive analytics is both uh, exciting and terrifying in equal parts, I think, when you think of being able to predict whether you, 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 you will get divorced or not. Uh, it does enter into big brother territory, but there's a lot that can be done with predictive analytics to make life better and to especially influence how our products are used by our customers and the benefits they can get from them. We already use predictive analytics quite a bit. 
uh, but there's a, a huge, uh, uh, a lot, uh, there's a lot more we can do with it over time. So when we think of the digital compliance portfolio, we sort of think of in terms of how we provide visibility into your data, how we take that visibility and add context. How can we enrich the metadata around an item that we, we have understanding of uh, and, and make it more relevant? And how, at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do is surface relevant information, surface it for a supervision review team so that they find the content that's most actionable, surface it for a legal team so that they can find the content that's relevant for a litigation, Freedom of Information Act request or subject access request. So the heart of our product portfolio is really the Veritas Information Classifier. It is the tool that gives context. It takes just raw data and to use the same analogy that Anon used earlier, takes the raw gold and, and refines it into pure gold. Um, so Veritas Information Classifier is embedded in most of the Veritas products. And uh, on the visibility side, we have Data Insight and Merge One. Enterprise Vault uh, is our archive where the content can reside. And uh, we can deploy that on premise in the cloud as a SaaS solution and also in the cloud in your own tenant as an infrastructure as a service uh, deployment. And then finally, we have our supervision and discovery tools that really take advantage of the visibility and context. So let's start with visibility. So if you wanna do predictive analytics, the first thing you need is historical data and a lot of it. The more you can collect, the better your ability is to predict. So we have uh, two solutions. First of all, Merge One. This came to Veritas in our recent acquisition of a company called Globinet. Merge One lets us have visibility primarily into communications. And they have the ability to bring in 80, 80, 90, uh, 80 native sources of content and bring that into our archives. So you can not only capture that content, but you can classify it and you can um, uh, classify it and also um, index that content so it's easily retrievable. So great visibility into all the communications within your company whether it's internal communications or external with, uh, with customers and partners and so on. And then we have Data Insight. Data Insight complements Merge One very well in that it provides great visibility in what's going on in your file estate. What are your employees doing? Uh, how are they using OneDrive, SharePoint, Box, uh, Windows filers, other filers, where everything that has to do with file activity is monitored by Data Insight. And so you've got, again, great visibility into all of your communications, great visibility into all your file actions as well. But really, again, the heart of our portfolio is our classification engine. It's great to have the visibility, but you don't wanna to have to mine through every communication that's been sent. You don't wanna look at every file that's been created. You wanna know what's relevant. And that's where adding context becomes absolutely critical. The more context we can put around an item, Again, the better able we are to make valuable predictive um, uh, predictions for the future using analytics, machine learning, and so on. So the classification engine has been around for a long time, but it's constantly evolving and getting better. We provide uh, over 150 default policies, and we also look for specific patterns to tell us what's in content. Pattern could be something like a credit card number, a national identifier, personally identifiable information. And um, it, it, not only do we provide those de default policies, but you can create your own as well. And in addition to things like proximity searching and, and keyword matches, we can tell you what language the content is in. That might be important in terms of where to um, send the content for review. We can help detect a document, a certain type of document. Maybe you can detect that a uh, quote is being sent to a customer and that will help you predict whether or not the sale is about to close. We can look at um, all aspects of your communications. There's a number of uh, exciting things coming in the next calendar year, in calendar year 21, topic extraction and sentiment analysis. And these are really exciting because again, they directly um, help you make better predictions. So topic extraction is the idea of picking out the most important item uh, or sorry, the overall I uh, idea of what the communication is about. And sentiment is telling you whether the general sentiment tied to that topic is positive or negative. So how would you use this in practice? Well, say you wanted to get a pulse on the overall morale of your company. 
you might use a survey or something like that. And, and it, if you're like me, when you get an employee survey, you give it about 5% of your attention, you get through it as quickly as possible. And uh, you may be, the results are okay. But if you could actually leverage all of your employees' communications, tie it to a topic, engage the sentiment on that topic, then all of a sudden you'd have really powerful insights. How do, comp how do employees feel about their compensation? How do they feel about the new CEO? How do they feel about the new acquisition that was just made? So you can get very, very targeted, specific, inter um, interesting insights, which again, you can help use to make future predictions. Another area that I'm very excited about is voice analysis and transcription as well. We're living in a world where we do far more meetings over Zoom, over Teams. We can already capture Zoom, audio, video, and even the transcript. And uh, we will be able to do the same for Teams very soon, audio, video, and transcript. And just think of the interesting things that come with having a transcript of every meeting. Now, on the bad side, every stupid thing you've ever said in a meeting will be preserved and discoverable. But on the good side, think of what you can learn from that. Everything that was ever communicated, even in a team meeting, you get to know who the experts are in your company in different topics. You can uh, get a better pulse on you know, what your employees are, are concerned with. And, and you have this huge repository of knowledge collected from every meeting. A lot of exciting things you can do with that just as a knowledge worker, having something to draw on because you can't remember everything that was ever discussed, but now you have a record of it. In addition to that, the idea of voice analysis as enriching the content is really exciting. For example, if you're a teacher and you're teaching uh, a number of students, you could get a pulse on who is actually actively engaged in the conversation. You can get a sense of whether they're interested or confused. If you're in the insurance industry, as Anon mentioned before, they've got a long history of making predictive uh, predictions based on whatever data they can get their hands on. What if we could do an analysis of every phone call coming in, every claim that's being made, and gauge it for fraud? We can detect fraud using voice analysis by just looking for pauses, looking for the cadence, looking, looking for the word usage um, within that. So adding in voice analysis is very exciting. And this leads to another future area of metadata enrichment, um, video analysis as well. Kind of by the same token, not only can you tell a lot from voice analysis, but again, we're doing Zoom meetings where you see a close-up of everybody's face. Next thing to be able to do is to gauge emotion, gauge interest, gauge whether the person is bored or not. Think of how valuable that would be in predicting whether a sale is gonna close or not. If I have a video chat with a prospective client and they look bored throughout the uh, conversation, then that's a big indication that they're just not that into the product. But if they are very engaged, you pick up emotional cues from the video, from the audio, and also from what's being said, you've got a higher likelihood that that sale is going to come through. So exciting new world for us, and predictive analytics is going to drive some very new use cases, as well as improve the products that we have today. And to that point, I mentioned that we do have analytics in the products currently. So I want to just take you through kind of where we are today with Data Insight. Again, the whole idea of Data Insight is to monitor what your, what your employees are doing in their file estate, who's creating files, who's accessing files, and so on. Well, the great thing is that you can look at the activities over a period of time, and you can look for anomalous behavior. On an average week, maybe an employee touches 30 files, and maybe they're in a certain repository where they're, they're always collecting, they're going to a certain OneDrive folder, a certain SharePoint uh, location, if all of a sudden that employee downloads a lot of sensitive documents from a different department, maybe they're pulling down engineering plans, maybe they're pulling down company financials, maybe that employee is about to leave the company and take some company IP with them. Similar on, uh, in Veritas Advanced Supervision, we are actually monitoring communications. And typically this is for financial services where we're looking for really bad active uh, actions like insider trading, money laundering, things that are you know, SEC violations. But this same technology is very applicable to other use cases. Like say you found a uh, an employee that was a downloading a lot of sensitive content. Maybe you would wanna monitor their communications more closely using advanced supervision. Uh, in advanced supervision, 
we've got this great machine learning capability called intelligent review. And uh, what this does is it takes advantage of the fact that just by the nature of the job, you've got human reviewers monitoring communications every day. They have to look through thousands of messages and determine whether there's any wrongdoing in order to meet SEC regulations in the financial services uh, area. Uh, what intelligent review does is it learns what they deem to be relevant and irrelevant over time, and it trains a machine learning engine. And then in the future, once it's learned from those choices, it will surface what we deem to most likely be the relevant choices and what is irrelevant. And now in the future, we're going to even add greater capability to this feature by letting the reviewers actually help to train the machine learning engine by selecting phrases that would indicate that a message is either relevant or irrelevant. So great new capability helps uh, our reviewers get their job done faster. And then finally, in eDiscovery Platform, eDiscovery Platform, the whole goal is to take, collect all of the relevant information and call down to the content that's actually relevant to a litigation case or a Freedom of Information Act request. And so the amount of time you can save a human reviewer from sorting through content is absolutely critical in terms of cost savings and obviously time saving as well, getting the case prepared quickly. So anything you can do to accelerate that process of sorting through the big stack of documents and getting down to the refined set of documents without having to have someone, a human reviewer go through it, it's gonna save you a huge amount in legal fees. And Anon, I know you've had a lot of time where you've worked on, you've been working on the eDiscovery platform product for a long time. Um, can you add anything to just kind of give an overview of what predictive coding is all about? Yes, Dev. So in a typical eDiscovery workflow, a predictive coding enables legal team to automatically classify document according to case issues. So typically what happens in predictive coding, a manual reviewer, just for an example, an attorney or a legal expert, who is involved in a litigation, review a very small set of documents, say 100 documents, tag them and as per his understanding and study. And then the case manager train the system based on those samples of 100 documents. And with that training, machines will predict for thousands of documents. So it significantly saves cost and time. So you're basically taking training against a small subset of all of the data and then applying that to the whole corpus of, of data that's been collected and that pile of documents gets reduced significantly so that when you actually have a legal expert, a, a lawyer, a person from your legal team, they have a, a much smaller set to, to, to work off of. Is that correct? Yeah, perfect. Okay, all right, thanks. So that's kind of where we are today. There's a lot of other exciting things we can do with this, uh, you know, with predictive analytics. And again, it all goes back to visibility and our ability to enrich that metadata around those items to make better choices. So now like a lot of our customers are sitting on years of communication data. And how can we learn from that communication data what's happened in the past to make better decisions in the future? And so that gets into kind of the other areas of just the value of communications driving insight. Again, you've got that unrefined gold sitting there. How can you surface that to your data insight, your data science, sorry, your data scientists and how can they bring that in and correlate that maybe with other, other um, sources to, to make predictions? And we just have a couple of things that we're actively working on, uh, three things actually that I wanted to share. So they, again, the premise is you've, you've, you're capturing all these communications, what can you learn from it? Well, think in terms of telehealth. With COVID, telehealth is becoming, not the new norm, but it's becoming far more uh, common where you're actually talking to your doctor over you know, Zoom or Teams or, or other media. So what can you do? How can you, what can you an analyze in that interaction? Well, you can look at the audio and video and de deem if there's being rapport being built between the doctor and the patient. For example, like a, a lot of times if you're going to a doctor, it could be something very serious. The patient could be very stressed at the beginning of the conversation. And part of the doctor's job, part of what makes a great doctor is their bedside manner, their ability to kind of calm the patient down and get to the um, get to the heart of the problem. And you can gauge the doctor's effectiveness at doing that. You can gauge patient comprehension. Again, just by voice analysis, you can tell if the, the patient is confused or if they legitimately get what the doctor is saying. 
You can also gauge the effectiveness of the doctor as a communicator. If they're talking very quickly, if they're using a lot of jargon, the patient's going to be lost. So there's a lot of ways of kind of from the interaction, you can look for um, cues to make a better doctor, look for better best practices and that sort of thing. You can also look for prescription shopping. You can use that same fraud analysis to be able to determine if someone is just trying to get an opioid prescription that they don't really need or something similar. So you can use this to predict patient outcomes. You find your good doctors over time. You can see, you can correlate the good doctor to patient outcomes. How many times does that patient have to come back before they're cured? And that can lead to higher Medicare payments in the US. You can uh, find your best position for certain use cases. Maybe there's some you know, very unique forms of cancer or other uh, issues that some doctors are becoming expert in. And so you can capture that from these interactions. This is the, the key topic. This was about this form of cancer. This ultimately over time had a, a positive uh, output uh, outcome. And you'd be able to, again, look for best practices and that sort of thing, but predict whether or not one patient would do better than another. And then you can also show the impact of maybe applying some of the best practices that makes a great doctor. I alluded to sales analytics a couple of times earlier in the presentation. You know, the idea of knowing whether a deal is gonna close and knowing if you've got a good account rep or a bad account rep or somewhere in between is absolutely critical. And this is something that customer, uh, companies are spending millions of dollars on. It's uh, very important as part of the CRM solution, but there's a lot of communication data that would really help complement what you capture in your CRM. If you can get a sense of the sales rep and the client rapport again, if a sales rep sends an email and the target customer replies instantly, that's interesting. If they sit on it a couple of days, if the volume of email outbound to the customer is far greater than the responses, again, that indicates maybe they're not that into us. Um, but you can also look for signs of a deal closing. Did they send a quote? Did they send a legal contract? Is there like certain documents that indicate the deal is about to close? And you can use this to predict the likelihood of, is it gonna close this quarter or next quarter? And again, you can use that wealth of data you've collected over years potentially to help you determine all of the signs that the deal is about to close. You can also predict whether the account rep is going to be successful long term and uh, whether you, know, you need to make an account cha team change. You can even compare one account team to another. So it's very interesting there. And then finally, HR analytics. Another very exciting area, a lot of uh, time and money being spent on this. How do you identify your best employees? How do you identify employees that are about to leave the company? So I already talked about the idea of looking for signs in file activity. If they're downloading a lot of company ID, content they don't usually access, they may be on the verge of leaving, but there's all kinds of other indicators. You could look at response times to management. If they're not responding to their direct manager in a timely fashion, or if they're uh, patterns have changed, they may be about to leave the company. If, they, um, if the sentiment of their emails is declining, they may be unhappy, they may be burning out, they may be leaving. Now, on the other side of it, you can also use, you can make predictions on who your best employees are going to be. One of the key tenets of a good employee is the size of their network. How many people are they communicating with? Because the more different groups that they communicate with, the better they understand everything that's going on in the company. The more that they have a contact in every department who can help them get things done. So that is a very key indicator. Having that sort of circle of influence and understanding that is, is critical to predicting who is going to be a successful employee. And also, again, maybe it's a coaching moment. If you see one of your employees has a broad network, and another has a very narrow network, you could train them and say, hey, you know, you've got to get out there and make yourself more available and interact with more people. So again, detect if someone's gonna leave, detect problem employees um, and, and predict, you know, who is going to be successful long-term. So we covered a lot in a hurry here, um, but uh, the thing is, I think that Anand did a great job of sort of giving an overview of what predictive analytics is all about. And we wanted to show that we're already taking advantage of this, but this is a primary focus for digital compliance going forward. 
we are doing many things to enrich metadata. Um, we're doing many things to make sure we capture all the content sources that you might care about. And we're using that to drive actions in our discovery and supervision solutions, as well as opening up for brand new use cases in healthcare um, and, uh, and, and other industries that take advantage of those same tools, but use them in a different manner. And with that, we'd like to hear your questions, answer uh, questions and comments, uh, anything you would like to see in this space. Uh, very interested in hearing your opinions. Thank you, David and Anand. That was an awesome presentation. And um, we do have some questions here from, from the viewers. So I wanted to take a few minutes to have you guys get, as, get through as many as we can. If we don't get to your questions, you can visit the Vox community. You'll see that all the way at the bottom on the left-hand corner of all your menu choices. So without further ado, uh, the first question we have from the audience is, does this utilize Aptar in some way or is it a completely separate product? Okay, great question. I'll take that one. Um, it is a completely separate product. There has been, uh, there have been some, uh, actually a set of products. Um, we have explored the idea of integrating with Aptar, but there's no Aptar integration at this point. Okay. Um, the next question that we have is, how are the predictive analytics you presented different from typical analytics and what is the novel part? Anand, do you want to take this one? Yeah. So business analytics gives an ability to businesses to take better decision by understanding the existing business situation. It involves understanding the existing data, mining into it, reporting it. On the other hand, predictive analytics goes one step ahead and it not only understand existing data, but it also find a pattern into the existing data. And from that pattern, it extrapolate that. And along with its own learning, prediction analytics add ability to predict what can happen next in the future. So in short, predictive analytics is a step ahead of typical business analytics. For example, business analytics can tell which product is selling best currently, whereas predictive analytics can understand all the products, understand pattern and learn from it and predict which product will sell best in the future. Hope that answers that. Great, we have one more question that, um, that just came in. It is, can I use the raw data you provide to plug into my SIEM? Well, we do have within Enterprise Vault the ability to um, make the data available through an analytics connector. And then that lets you feed that all of your communication data, all the metadata, all the message, like the, the content into a broader data lake into business intelligence tools. So there is that ability. Awesome. Well, guys, I think that's um, all the time that we have for our questions today. So I want to thank the audience for joining us. We really appreciate you being here and hope you enjoy the rest of the show. If you do have further questions, you can go into the Box community. As I mentioned, it's right in the drop down in your menu. And again, thank you to David and Anand for a wonderful session today. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Now go conquer that cloud. <laughs>